What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. Now for this video, we're going to be jumping into Icon and Rocket Season 1 Issue Number 2. Now if you didn't catch issue number one, go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything that has been going on in this line. And be sure to check out my playlist covering all of the milestone issues that DC is currently releasing right now. And that includes static and some hardware. Now this story is written by Reginald Hudlin. Pencils are Doug Brathwaite. The inks are Andrew Curry and it is colored by Brad Anderson. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. All right, guys, so as we dive into issue number two, we're picking up with Icon and Rocket now doing their superhero thing, freshly on the scene, trying to clean up their neighborhood. And I think that's one of the great things uh, about Icon as he's somebody that, that literally grew up during slavery. If anybody is to understand oppression, it's definitely him. Augustus has experienced more than probably any other living person on the planet. And with Rocket being able to convince him to do the right thing, to clean up these neighborhoods, to help the poorest of the poor, to help the community that you are literally living in, these are your people and you need to be helping them. And so our story opens up with Icon and Rocket doing their superhero thing. Not only are they doing that, but the police are actively playing them down, saying that vigilanteism is illegal, that they shouldn't be out here doing anything, and that the police are responsible for the, uh, for the decrease in crime in the area, saying that they've upped their patrols and so on and so forth. Really just trying to take credit for what Icon and Rocket are doing and downplaying them and playing them as nothing more than criminals. But the reality is these guys are out here, they're on the front lines doing what needs to be done. And this is where we see Rocket go and help some kids. Some kids that are saying this woman has been getting beat. Maybe it's their mother, it doesn't really specify. But saying that this lady, she needs some help. And so Rocket going to the door, she knocks on it. Knocking on the door, a, a battered, beaten woman answers it. And a man literally wearing a freaking wife beater. He comes outraged that Rocket even came inside the house. But Rocket, she blasts him through the window through the security bars and pretty much told her throw all of his stuff outside and don't ever let him come back in again. And with them doing all of this superheroing, nobody in the neighborhood is willing to talk to police or reporters and really say who these individuals are, what they look like, or anything of that nature. This community is doing their best to keep this, this new superhero vigilantes that are keeping their streets clean. They're doing their best to keep it a secret. And this is where we see two police officers make their way over to Rocket's house, thinking that she may be Rocket, thinking that she's connected to it in some way, shape, or form, they go to her mother's house and they intimidate her mother, saying that if you don't help us with this investigation, if you don't comply with us, we're going to arrest you, we're going to arrest your daughter, we're going to make your life a living hell, so on and so forth. Typical, you know, strongman tactics that police have used to try to get information out of people when they don't want to actually do the work and put in the effort when it's needed. Now, of course, Rocket's mother, she's a little bit worried right now. She She's a little bit on edge. She doesn't know what to do. Police are right here in front of her telling her if she doesn't do this, then there's going to be consequences and repercussions. But this is when she gets a knock at the door. And that knock at the door is Miss Collins, a lawyer sent here on behalf of, they say, parties and representation but they don't necessarily say Augustus. Well, now, we assume that it could be Augustus, but at, at the end of the day, it really doesn't necessarily seem like it is him. And so with that, the police, they make their exit. Now, having some representation, the police, they can't do anything here. Not without getting themselves in trouble and possibly even fired or even worse. Now, this is the part in the story that I, I think I love the most out of all of this. We're taken to the law offices of Augustus Freeman, the law office of Icon. And right now, he is taking a meeting with a woman named Miss Baker, his new NSA contact, 
uh, kind of the in-between person between him and the NSA. Some could even say a handler, if you will. Now, there's a little bit of friendly banter here, but it doesn't last long. It's broken up because she's sent here on behalf of the NSA to kind of give him a chewing out, to let him know that that tech that he gave to Rocket, it, it's tech that the NSA has never even gotten their hands on. And so at the end of the day, they're kind of jealous. They're offended that he didn't give that technology over. And right now, the agency is more concerned with the fact that he's been going public with his powers. And they're very curious on the scope of his ambitions. How far is he actually going to push this? Now, Augustus tries to tell her that he's simply cleaning up his neighborhood. And in all honesty, it's something that he would rather not do. But it seems like the government has a hell-bent aspect of creating toxic environments, especially for the poorest of communities. Now, Biz Baker tells him with, with the utmost respect that you need to stop it. You need to stop helping these communities. You need to stop doing everything that you are currently doing. And if he doesn't stop, that there are going to be consequences not only for him, but also for Rocket. Now, of course, Icon, he finds this amusing. Like, the idea that, that you guys could ever threaten me is absolutely astonishing. Because at the end of the day, do you really think you can stop Icon? Because many times they have already tried and they have failed every single time. And so he doesn't give two craps what they want, what they are asking for. He's going to do what he wants when he wants to do it. And that's what's going to take us to later that evening. Picking up at a nightclub, it seems like a lot of guys, a lot of bad guys are getting together and they're discussing what their best course of action is to do here. We have Zeus, we have Capone, they're all trying to figure out what they're going to do to be able to keep their business running, to keep these neighborhoods operating that Icon and Rocket have been taking over. Now some of them, they want to call this a loss, they want to call it a day and cut ties with it completely, but others... They're not too scared of Icon and Rocket, and they, they've been getting some outside help, some outside hardware, to be able to go against them. But this discussion, it gets interrupted with Icon and Rocket dropping in through the ceiling. With them dropping in, everybody scatters, and the fight breaks out. People shooting, throwing grenades, trying anything they can do to be able to take these guys on. We see Rocket grab one of those grenades and use its kinetic energy back against the guy who threw it. But this is where we see Zeus come out of freaking nowhere in this giant machine. And he immediately starts targeting Icon, throwing a flame blast in his direction, hitting him, but it doesn't seem to be taking him down. Now, as he's fighting this thing, it takes out the, the main, the main load-bearing pillars, the load-bearing walls that are holding this whole place up. And because of that, we see Rocket hold on to the ceiling, stopping it from collapsing as Rocket gets all of these people out of here. With Icon being able to hold it up just long enough for everybody to be able to get out, the building falls on top of him. With the building falling on top of him, we see Icon rise up from the ashes. And him and Rocket have a discussion about what just freaking happened. With Zeus being able to make his exit on that giant machine he had, he's definitely getting some outside help because that machine, it was specifically created to take down Icon, to go against Icon. And so with them making their appearance to the world, with Icon showing the world who he is, and with giving Rocket this belt that gives her these powers, it has put a giant target on their back. Not just their back, but on the backs of everyone they know, everyone they love, and everybody that they care about. But this is the part in the story where we pick up with an individual that's referred to as Benedict Lord, or Mr. Smith, if you will, saying that he has been with the agency for generations, long before her great-grandfather was even born. He has a unique ability of detecting the presence of individuals from another world who would hide among them, such as Icon. And so the American government, they have found this very valuable and they have kept him as an asset for quite some time now. And it seems like this is the individual that they are hiring, that they are bringing on to try to take care of Icon. And for him, this is not something new because he has taken on Icon before 
and he has won against Icon. And that's what's going to take us back to the past, to the 1800s. Now, Mr. Smith or, or Benedict Lord, he knows everything about Icon. He knows that Icon grew up on a plantation, that he was not from this earth, and that it took a while for his alien memories and abilities to return. And when he came into full strength, he cast out the landowners. All of the slave owners, they were cast out of their lands. He started a rebellion, but he also let them know that anybody that wanted to live here, they were allowed to be here, but they had to be free. Whether they be white or black, it did not matter to him. He just wanted people to have freedom, to work together in harmony, and have some kind of peace in this world. But with these white landowners getting cast out, they could not deal with the idea of a black free territory, of a black man kicking them out of their land, of saying that this is free land and there is nothing you can do about it. And so these men, they formed a mob. They formed a mob to go kill Augustus, to take him out and put an end to this rebellion. But upon their arrival, they are met with Icon floating up in the sky, eyes burning red. And though they tried to fire their weapons, they did their best to try to take him out of the sky. Nothing they did worked. Nothing they did was sufficient to be able to take him down. And you would think this such a defeat, they would back away and they would not return. But this time they returned with the help of the US government. Bringing in artillery and cavalry, they shot everything they had at him and absolutely nothing worked. The only issue is they were shooting so much, it put the lives of everybody that came here for sanctuary in danger. And so taking this fight to his enemies, taking this fight directly to the presidency of the Confederacy, he shows up to the building completely engulfed in flames, and with him flying inside, he returns, holding in his hand the head, the severed head, of Jefferson Davis the president of the confederacy. Though it was not in his heart to do murder, to kill individuals, he wanted to send a very clear and direct message. But so did Benedict Lord. And this is where we see the chest of Icon pierced. Pierced with something by Mr. Smith. And though the confederacy had died that day, Mr. Smith had also believed that he had killed Icon because he had watched him bleed out in front of the crowd. And then he destroyed all evidence of his existence, every newspaper account, every eyewitness. He killed, murdered, or destroyed. But somehow, Augustus was able to stay alive. He managed to live, and now he has returned. And Mr. Smith, Benedict Lord, has every intention of taking him down with the help of the NSA. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment. I personally absolutely love this issue. I think it was absolutely fantastic and it was a great issue to show that Icon is not Superman. You know, Superman, he always works on the macro. He's working on the big levels, taking on world-ending disasters. But Icon, he's somebody that's working inside of his neighborhood. And not necessarily because he thinks it's the right thing to do, but because Rocket convinced him that it's the right thing to do. And though many people want to shut him down, many people want to stop him and Rocket from doing everything that they are doing. They are not going to stop the wave that is about to come. Because this story picks up two weeks prior to the Big Bang. Two weeks prior to when everybody starts getting powers, or a handful of individuals start getting powers from the grenades, the gas that was released during the protest. And so we are about to see a whole new world on the horizon. So let me know what you think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.